Hello everyone. So today we'll be looking at the basic working of the steering system in our Ravco car. Uh, we use a Pitman triangle uh, connected to tie rods, which helps steer our go kart. So mainly, firstly, we'll be looking at the basic geometry of our uh, go kart. This the tire distance between the two axles from the center of the front axle tire to the rear axle tire is known as the wheel base, and the distance between the center of the tire uh, center of the tires of the rear axle is known as the track grid. Now, uh, when we turn a vehicle, we can see that the outer wheel turns lesser than the inner wheel. This is because imagine a center of curvature where you are turning your vehicle. At that moment of time, this wheel has to cover far more distance in a circumference than the inner wheel. Hence, we can see that the inner wheel has a greater angle than the outer wheel. This can be shown as phi and theta, and we can say that phi is always greater than theta. Now, we have one more second or one more angle, which is known as alpha. This alpha can be taken as alpha is equal to tan inverse of half of a, that is half of track width, divided by the wheel base. Now, coming to uh, the designing of the st uh, steering system of our go kart specifically, we use a pitman triangle and we use a tie rod connected to our knuckle to steer our wheels. Here we can see that we are taking the allowance a little bit uh, behind our rear axle by around 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 inches, after which we get the alpha. For this alpha, we need not use this formula again. We do not generally consider this. Uh, we can when we want to verify our acquirement geometry. Now, to verify our acquirement geometry or the closeness of how we ideally want our steering system to be, that is the inner wheel turning more than the outer wheel, we consider these formulas where theta is the outer wheel angle and phi is the inner wheel angle. We can say that theta is equal to tan inverse of wheelbase divided by radius of curvature minus half of track width. Similarly, in the angle of inner wheel, we have the formula tan inverse of wheelbase divided by radius of curvature plus half of track width. The difference here being the minus and the plus. Now, once we analyze our uh, steering system that it matches with acquirement geometry, we need to know how close it is to the ideal acquirement geometry or else we can have it in a way that when you are turning at a lesser uh, radius of curvature you can over you can be oversteering or understeering or at higher angles it might be oversteering or understeering what we usually want is towards the median levels of the radius of curvature we want our uh, acquirement geometry to be near 100% as we can ideally never get to 100% this percentage can be found out by using percentage acquirement is equal to theta by theta into 100, where theta is the outer wheel angle and beta is the ideal inner wheel angle. This beta can be found by using the formula wheelbase divided by wheelbase divided by tan phi. This is what we actually have, the phi which we actually have, while beta represents the ideal one. So L by tan phi minus whole of A meaning uh, whole minus k, okay. Now coming back to some more uh, details of the steering system in our go kart. Then these are few of the important angles that we employ in our steering module. Uh, first one is the camber. The camber is what is the angle of uh, inclination which you can see when you see your go kart from the front view that is from the nose of it you can see that it forms a certain angle with the vertical so that is called as the camber when the tire is stuck inward with, re with respect to the vertical line it is positive camber when it is stuck outward it is called as negative camber Positive camber is used in most vehicles, while negative camber is specifically used when you need more control and grip over your vehicle. Uh, negative camber helps with uh, gaining more traction, that is, it creates more contact with the ground and uh, it avoids rolling over 
when there are steep bends bends i mean the turns when there are steeper bends when there is positive camber there are chances that the vehicle might roll but here due to the negative camber there are lesser chances of rolling occurring at bends so hence uh, negative camber gives us more control but there is more tire wear while positive camber reduces tire wear we'll see how that affects in steering axis inclination by steering axis inclination we can see that uh, let us say we have our tire here and our kingpin here so kingpin is what holds the controller basically uh, so the kingpin here uh, is uh, what uh, with respect to vertical let's see it has two parallel lines through the tire center and through the steering axis when the tire rotates there will be some scrubbing along the surface of the tire wherever it is contacting this distance between steering axis and tire center axis is known as the scrub radius it is known as scrub radius as i told there is some scrubbing between the surface of contact and uh, the tire due to which there is tire wear now this can be reduced by using a positive camber combined with a steering axis inclination all these are exaggerated angles and the actual cambering is and uh, steering axis inclination is not as much as we see here and now steering axis is inclined with respect to the vertical uh, and the camber positive cambering is also provided so that the, there is reduction of scrub radius this angle in uh, which includes both uh, sai and camber is known as the included angle this reduced scrub helps in uh, lesser tire wear and it also helps to straighten out the tire when you turn when you when the tire is like this and you put turn try to turn it there will be some force which will be exerted toward the ground and due to the reactionary force the tire is put back up straight the, this is how sai and cambering helps but in our go kart we'll be using negative camber as it gives us more control over our go kart during deeper bends now coming to the final angle which we employ in our steering module that is caster in the real world we never have negative caster it is totally impractical and uh, the steering becomes very uh, unstable so we use positive caster positive caster is when you look at look at the go kart from the side view at the front wheel with respect to vertical the steering axis or the kingpin is inclined toward the rear like this this is known as positive caster due to this we can see that whenever you are turning your wheel this was the straight wheel now when you turn it a little at that time the steering axis is actually more forward than the contact path due to which a torque is generated and it tries to push back the wheel this makes the wheel to always follow the steering axis due to which we can see that the wheels always get back to their initial position that is straight this can also be observed when you take a trolley at your supermarket and you can observe that the steering axis is here and the wheel is here you will be moving like this when you turn the wheel turns so due to positive caster the wheel follows the steering axis due to which your vehicle is stable all of these angles uh, contribute to the controlled tire wear and uh, proper steering of your vehicle